In this season of Advent, may the love of God the Father and the grace of Jesus the Son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you. Good evening. My name is Adam Rogers and I'm the pastor here at Westminster Presbyterian Church and I want to welcome you to uh, week two of our midweek Advent Vespers services. My prayer is that in the midst of this unprecedented holiday season, that these worship services might be an opportunity for you to prepare your heart for the rebirth of Jesus Christ in your life as we spend some time singing, praying, and listening for God's voice. Now let's continue in our time together with the lighting of our Advent candles. Tonight, we light two candles. The first candle represents hope, the hope of our coming Savior. The second candle represents peace, the peace that Jesus Christ, our Savior, gives to the world. Let us pray. Dear God, as we journey down this Advent road, grant us the courage to make peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This evening's Bible reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Now, as you heard this passage, did you ever notice that Mary and Joseph's son is given two names in the Gospel of Matthew. At first, he's named Jesus, which means Savior or 
God saves. Jesus will save his people from their sins. But then did you also notice he's named Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The late pastor Eugene Peterson, in his modern paraphrase of the Bible, famously describes the name of Emmanuel by writing, quote, God became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Now, God's plan for your salvation is to come and be with you. In Jesus Christ, God is revealed as the Savior, as Emmanuel, which means your salvation is not about you figuring out a way to escape the difficult, pain-filled, exhausting conditions of your life down here. You see, the good news is that your salvation is found in the God who became flesh and blood and moved into your neighborhood. And he did so because he loves you and doesn't want you to spend another day feeling lost and unloved. See, you live a very ordinary, mostly ambiguous life. So do I, let's be honest. But it is precisely in the ordinary and unremarkable days of our lives where God's grace thrives. Because God is Emmanuel, because God is with us, the Christmas message is that God enters every ordinary corner of your life and saves it simply by his presence. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means you can spend less time praying for rescue from how your life is. And you can spend more time praying to see Emmanuel in every circumstance in your life. So may you start to see that it is God who is with you throughout the full range of your life experiences, from the days of pain and tears to the days of joy and laughter. And when the days are long and when peace is difficult to find, may you hear once again the words of the Christmas angel Gabriel, who says to us, on this very night, God is with you. Do not be afraid. Would you please pray with me? Jesus, Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, reveal yourself to us today. This very night, reveal yourself to us. We need peace in our lives and our homes, our families, our church, this whole world needs your peace. Help us to slow down and to seek out the peace you provide so that we may become peacemakers for ourselves and for our neighbors. For it's in your name, Prince of Peace, that we pray this night. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us this evening for our Advent Vespers on this, the second week of the season of Advent. Again, I hope that you might uh, consider uh, joining us, uh, joining me for a live Zoom gathering at 8 o'clock, again this evening at 8 o'clock. The information uh, has been in our bulletins and on our website and our newsletter. You can uh, join in and we'll just spend some time talking about our lives and sharing our life together and, and praying together. Uh, so I hope you can do that again. It's 8 o'clock this evening. Uh, you know, let's receive the benediction right now. Last week, I encouraged you to be people of hope. Tonight, I leave you with this. May you be people of peace. Let peace live in your heart and share the peace of Christ with all you meet. Share peace by acting out of compassion and not fear. Share peace by listening to all sides of the story. Share peace by praying for our world. And in this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share peace. And as you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share peace and hope with those you meet. Amen.